I remember back in the late 60s visiting with my grandfather, Vine Deloria Sr., and he told me a story that stayed with me throughout my life uh, in the last 40-some years about one of his old friends that he was visiting with there uh, on the Standing Rock Reservation in South Dakota, right in South North Dakota. And this elder uh, friend of his couldn't speak English very well, but he lear loved to learn new English words. And he began to hear this word ecology, because we know it wasn't until the late 60s that this word was really put to use in the English language. And so he asked him, said, say, Tosh, he said, cousin, he said, what is this? They're talking about ecology. What's this word mean? And so he tried the best he could to, to describe to him this whole uh, concept of ecology and how it related to, to all the education and science that was unfolding. He says, you know, they have these places where people go to learn about life. And sometimes they spend 18 or 20 years learning how to read and then how to write and then how to, to talk about what they write about. And they read enough and write enough and talk enough. Finally, after 18 or 20 years, they get a piece of paper. It says they're a doctor of life. Take the very best readers and the best writers, the best talkers, speakers, those that can understand how to use all the scientific equipment. He said they've got things you can look into and things that are far away makes them look close. They can look down inside of things and things that are small. This machine makes them look big and they pour Mother Earth back and forth. And they spent lots and lots of money, lots and lots of time. He said, you know what he said? He said, you know what they found out? after all this? They found out that everything's interrelated. They found out when you pollute and poison the air which all living things breathe, you pollute and poison all living things. They found out when you pollute the water, poison the water which all living things need for life, you pollute all living things. He says, what do you think about that? The old man kind of shook his head. He said, oh, huh? He said, I was wondering when they get around to that. Look what they do. They cut her hair where it shouldn't be cut. Then they take and drill holes inside of her and suck her blood out. Then they put things inside of her and blow your, her bones out. And then he turned to my grandfather and shook his finger and said, and what would happen if you, did, if you did that to your mother? She'd die. That's exactly what's going to happen if we don't begin 